Hi everyone, it's Miss May from the Frankfurt Community Public Library Children's Department. And I want to remind you to check out our events on our um, events calendar at myfcpl.org slash calendar to see all of our amazing programs that are coming up that you can register for. And I also want to let you know that if you don't know already, we have a YouTube channel. So please go check it out at myfcpl on YouTube. And so now for the fun part, Today we have with us Aaron Yun. Is that correct, Aaron? Yes, Aaron Yun. Yep. Aaron Yun from a special for a special Pipple Park question and answer. Debut author Aaron Yun grew up in Frisco, Texas, and she received her bachelor's, her BFA in English from New York University, and served as president of its policy debate team. This experience came in handy for her job as the debate consultant for the Tony-nominated best play on Broadway, What the Constitution Means to Me. Erin is a member of the Society of Children's Book Writers and Illustrators and has written reviews and articles for Book Browse. And yes, she used to play basketball as a middle grader. Hi Erin, welcome and thanks for joining us. Hi, thank you so much to have me. Um, I'm really excited for today. Me too. So we shared a recording of your Pippa Park writing workshop with our patrons, um, but can you tell us a little more about the book? Yeah, of course. So Pippa Park Raises Her Game is about a Korean American girl named Pippa who receives a mysterious basketball scholarship to her local private school and becomes determined to use this opportunity as a chance to reinvent herself, both to impress her fancy new friends, as well as an impossibly cute crush on the side. It's a book about new friendships, first crushes, and the ups and downs of family. But above everything else, it's about one girl who, in trying to fit in, learns that maybe she's meant to stand out instead. Yeah. Um, so, and Erin, for the viewers who haven't had a chance to see the writing workshop, can you tell us a little bit about that? Of course. So in my author program, I focus on a few different takeaways. One of those things is we talk about what a fractured classic is, which is when you take a classic book and update it to tell a new story. And I usually think about it like a block of Legos where you start with one shape and then end up with an entirely new one. And then from there, I like to talk about a couple of the tricks and tips I use when I'm feeling uninspired while writing, which includes sketching my characters, making Spotify playlists for them, and even taking personality quizzes for them. And then finally, we talk about point of view before actually making our own retellings together, which is always a part that I'm super excited for. Great. Um, so you mentioned that you do like personality tests for your characters in that. Yeah. So how long have you been writing? Well, I mean, I've been writing for longer than I can remember. Definitely in elementary school, I remember we had a big family computer in the study and whenever anybody else wasn't using it, I'd be there and tinkering with like little short stories. Um, but I think it was probably middle grade or high school that I completed my first novel. So um, oh, yeah, so it's been a whole while and I've been taking personality quizzes I think for about like eight years now for my characters. Yeah. Oh, that's too funny. I never even would have thought about like a personality test for to help with character development. <laughs> right. Well, I think I'm personally obsessed with personality tests, so I take them all the time for me too. And so I was like, okay. might as well get some productivity done too. Yeah. <laughs> right. So then how much of your personality did you put into Pippa Park? That's a hard question because I always feel like it's changing too, just based on like a chapter I read and like different personality quirks that she has. I do think that we're similar in a couple ways. We're both dreamers who are really ambitious and kind of bumbling and a little awkward at times. But I think that she's definitely more extroverted and much more of a go-getter than I am. So I would say about 50-50. Yeah, okay. I started reading it because we got the book in, but I haven't finished it yet. And yeah. so I... I've been trying to figure out like who sent the mystery scholarship to her. So Okay, I won't spoil anything for you yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, but so who is your favorite character from the book? I would have to say, I think Pippa is the most relatable to me. So in a way that kind of makes her my favorite. And I just feel really um, tender toward her in a lot of different points of the book. But I think her brother-in-law, a man named jean -Pa, is probably my favorite character just because he's so sweet and humble and always there for her even when she makes mistakes and so I kind of just am instinctually drawn toward his character but I have soft spots for almost all of them yeah you would have to right they're all your creations exactly <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
what was the hardest part about writing this book? Hmm. You know, I think if this counts, the drafting stage was probably the hardest for me because I had about like a 35 page outline by the time I started writing. And so once I actually got into the writing, it went pretty smoothly just because I had that, you know, step-by-step -step playback there. But when I was making the draft um, part of the book, I would often get like bogged down by little details about like what would happen next or like what would be there. And I'm usually having the best time when I'm just sitting at the laptop writing. So drafting is definitely the hardest part of kind of writing a book for me. Yeah. So then you get your draft out and then add more to it as you're yeah. going through your draft or do you take away or is it kind of a little of both? I think it's both, right? So after the draft, I feel like the first edit kind of sticks to the draft. And then when the edits come in, and I realized, oh, maybe I didn't account for all the plot holes. Then I'll have to like start taking away things and adding things and kind of almost looking at it like a jigsaw puzzle where you have to like find the perfect piece for that scenario. So I would say that, yeah, the editing phase, I kind of have to add and take away both. But I have a much harder time taking away because I never want to, you know, kill scenes that I like worked hard on. So what I do is I usually copy paste and then put it in a separate Word document so that you know, I'll never use them probably, but I always have them there to lean back on. You never know. You like, never know. <laughs> right, especially like if you were to do a Pippa Park sequel. True, which I am. <laughs> you are? Yay! I am, yeah. I can't say much about it because it's still mostly under wraps, but um, I'm having a lot of fun with it, so I can't wait yeah. for that too. I know we'll we'll get that one as soon as it comes out because I'm really enjoying this one here. Oh, I'm so glad. <laughs> um, so how long then with like all the drafting the draft and the editing and stuff how long does it take you to write the book like in I would say okay so the writing bit of it only took about three months for the first draft I would say the drafting stage took another three months so that was about six months and the editing phase probably took about twice as long like a year so about a year and a half total most of that being in the oh, editing wow. stage Wow, so it's been in the in the works for a while. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think it's been out for about half a year now, so it still feels like uh, such a short time that it's been out from when, you know, you take into account all the drafting and editing phase I've been in. Yeah, so um, when you're writing, do you prefer quiet or like what's, what's your preferred atmosphere? My preferred writing? atmosphere, I usually like writing around like midnight to four in the morning is my like oh, wow. special hours. Yeah, I'm definitely a night owl. And I usually have like two cans of Diet Coke there. And then sometimes it's quiet because I'm writing, you know, at one in the morning and like there are people in the house. But um, if I have headphones, then I, I like to blast like K-pop or other music that I can just kind of nod along to while I'm writing. You know, I listen to the beat usually. Yeah. So does that work its way into your writing as well then? I usually try to, like, whenever I'm listening to songs, I'll make, like, Spotify playlists to describe, you know, a chapter I'm working on to help me get through, and sometimes if I'm feeling, like, you know, mischievous, I'll work some of the songs I'm listening to in the chapters, little Easter eggs for, like, what I'm doing in the moment, so I always find that really fun. Nice. I think I did remember, like, one time when she was maybe studying with the, uh, with her tutor, and she was talking okay. about, uh, music or something. Right, right, she definitely, um, no, no, music definitely plays a pretty big part in the, um, you know, first book because her tutor, like, there's some intrigue and mystery in the house surrounding music. And then Pippa, of course, you know, like all kids are, we're all fans of music. And so I feel like that's a really translatable, I guess, passion that, like, you know, everybody empathizes with loving music. So to me, I always try to work in a little music into the book. And I think the sequel actually has a little bit more music in it. And so I've been having fun, fun with that. <laughs> yeah. So you said you like to have a couple cans of Diet Coke with you when you're writing. What other kind of snacks do you like to have with you while you're writing? Ooh, okay. So Diet Coke is definitely the best snack to have. Um, I also, let me see. I'm trying to think, because it really isn't, I'm usually not eating, because I find when I'm eating while writing, my hands get all sticky, and I'm like <laughs> washing my hands and then going back for more like chocolate raisins. So I really <laughs> do only just like kind of drink Diet Coke during, and then I'll eat a bunch afterwards. Okay. <laughs> um, do you have a lucky charm that you like to keep with you? Like, you know, like the lucky rabbit's foot or something like that that's like to keep with you while you're writing or anything? Oh, that's, a, that's a very interesting question. And I'm like thinking of an answer because I definitely do, but it's almost like I have dozens of little lucky charms that I like keep everywhere in the house. I'm a little bit superstitious. 
Um, and so I'll have like, you know, lucky anklets, lucky coins, lucky pencils. I don't keep any one of them near me while I'm writing, but I usually uh -huh. like try to keep at least one little lucky thing on me wherever I go in like my backpack or purse. And so that might just be me being weird. <laughs> I don't think that's weird. I think a lot of people do that, actually. Yeah, it's comforting. Like, yeah. So, like, when you were playing basketball, and was it? It was middle school, right? That yeah. you played basketball. Did yeah. you have lucky socks and or that or lucky sh shoes? <laughs> no, I didn't back then, which maybe would explain why I wasn't that good. You know, I was definitely <laughs> not as good as Pippa was. So maybe if I had a lucky charm, I'd be doing a little bit better. Yeah. <laughs> um. So let's see. I had a question and now I've forgotten it. Um, <laughs> so how old do you have to be to publish a book? Wait, sorry, will you repeat that one more time? How old do you have to be to publish a book? Okay, well that's actually a question a lot of kids ask me and there definitely is no age. Every time I like think of different examples, um, I think the person who published Aragon was in his teens. I'd have to like fact check that to confirm, but I think he probably was like 16 or so, maybe even younger when he wrote the first draft of Aragon. Um, and there are definitely other cases too, where it's like people in middle or high school have published books. So I always say like, never focus on age as a factor of getting published. Just always write what you can. And when you're proud of something, then try to get it published. But age has nothing to do with that. That's awesome to know. <laughs> For all, yes. So the, the people that are in school right now and, and writing and loving it, they can work yeah. towards that goal earlier yeah, than they thought. Too early, right. So, um, did you do the illustration for the cover, or? <laughs> uh, I am not that great of an illustrator, although a lot of people ask me that, and it always makes me smile because I'm like, I wish I could do that cover. Um, <laughs> it was a lovely illustrator named Bev Johnson, and her work is amazing. I highly recommend you checking her out because every like art piece that she does is always visually stunning. And so I'm so happy that we had her do my cover. And so, did she work with you on that? Like, did you get to put input in, or? So I think that's an, a, like an interesting part about being a writer is like how much control I guess you have over the other elements. And in most cases, you don't have a lot of control at all. In my case, I was pretty fortunate because my publisher actually gave me some say and the input or, like along the process. So I didn't work directly with the illustrator, but they'd send me like um, early drafts of the cover or early drafts of Pippa. And then they'd be like, well, what do you think of this? Like, what about colors? And so I did have a little bit of feedback there, which really made me feel special and like happy. Nice, nice, because, yeah, I think that's helpful when you get to have a say in it, especially yeah. since it's your, I want it all to be mine. <laughs> right, and I mean, I guess there are pros and cons, like, on one hand, it's, like, you want to have, like, a process, because it's, like, it's your baby, and you want to see it every step of the way, but on the other hand, it's, like, when you don't have to worry about all the other elements, it's easier to focus on writing, and so I feel <laughs> really, like, happy to find that, like, happy medium, I guess. Is being that's in. true. I didn't think about it that way. <laughs> <laughs> um. So do you have any advice that you would give to inspiring writers or aspiring writers, I yeah. should say? <laughs> of course. Um, I think one of the advice that I would give today is there are two things that I think that I tell myself when I'm feeling uninspired, and that's one, read a lot, and two, live a lot. I think both components are kind of necessary for um, just to be a good writer. On one hand, like living a lot just having adventures, hanging out with friends, eating the best carrot cake that you might have ever tasted. All of those things are going to give you experiences and feelings that will translate onto a page. But by reading a lot, I think that that really helps give you the tools in order to translate those experiences in a way that will connect with other people too. And so I think the combination of those two will really just like get you a jump start um, as an aspiring writer. Yeah. So what are your favorite things to read then? My it's a hard question because I love to read everything. Um, like in terms of genres, there is no genre that I dislike. Mysteries, fantasy, like contemporary, I love that all. Um, in terms of favorite writers, I think that Neil Gaiman definitely played a huge role in just, um, I guess, my favorite books and how I tend to write, um, as well as Meg Cabot. I think the Princess Diaries series I've read like 10 times growing up. And so two, the two of them were two of my favorite authors. And in terms of books I've loved recently, um, right now I'm reading The Boys in the Back Row by Mike Jung, and that one's really awesome so far. Um, I also really liked You Should See Me in a Crown by Leah Johnson. That one was a YA contemporary. That was amazing. And so no particular books that, like, no, no genres that I particularly love to read because I love them all, but those were a couple <laughs> ones I've been enjoying. 
that's, that's like the perfect job. You get to read to learn more to, to exactly. make your craft better. Exactly. And then you can tell yourself when you're not like feeling productive, you're like, I'm not like, you know, shrugging off deadlines. I'm just like, you know, practicing by reading this book. <laughs> <laughs> right. So do you have any favorite pets or do you have any pets? I'm sorry. <laughs> No, no. I was like, oh, that's a hard question. You're going to make me choose yeah. between them. Do you have any pets? I do. I have two dogs. So one's a Morgie, who's, I think she finally topped five pounds the other day. We weighed oh, her. Wow. Um, and then a rat terrier who's 16 years old now. So she's super old and grumpy, but I love her. She's so cute. Yeah. And so do you have a, a do you live in a place where you have a yard for them to run around in or? Well, technically, I say my dog, so a little bit like the family dog. So right now, I'm home okay. with my parents in Texas. Um, I moved from New York about like a few months ago, and I'm, go I'm planning on going to grad school in a year, so I'm kind of like in a little bit of a limbo mode right now. So I do have a yard for them in Texas. Okay. Yeah. Texas is pretty nice. So it's very big. <laughs> it's very big. It's very warm. I'm like, I'm ready for that fall weather now, though. Yeah. So does it get like pretty cool down there where you're at? Um, I mean, never as cold as it is up north, you know, in New York, it's like, we'll have months of snow. In Texas, it's like, you'll have like, maybe a couple snowflakes will fall from the sky and they'll be like, cancel school for two weeks, like, we're done here. So it's like a different standard for cold. But yeah, it does drop a little bit. I, I have a, a family that lives in Abilene. And yeah. 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 It's Wait, oh, Abilene, it's at Abilene gonna, Texas. Yeah, yeah. I wonder if that's near me. I know, like, I've heard it, but I'm trying to think of how far, and I can't remember where it is. It's like central, <laughs> northern central or some, somewhere okay, around. Okay, okay. Panhandle-ish. <laughs> um, yeah. Do you like to play video games? I do like to play video games a lot. Um, I have, yeah. you know, the Switch and the Xbox, so mostly on those two consoles, but I'm a huge fan of Ultimate Smash, <laughs> if anyone <laughs> else out there plays. Um, I'm not the best at it, but I am, like, pretty obsessed. Yeah. Yeah, I've been in, I grew up with Nintendo, yeah, and so that's yeah. about all that I've played. <laughs> what was your favorite game? Um, I really enjoyed one called Super Sprint, and it was Super just Sprint. like race cars driving around in circles. Okay, I'm bad at driving in real life, and I'm like doubly bad at driving in video games, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you already said what you were reading now. Do you like to read multiple books at once? Or do you like to have one at a time? I think that I like to read multiple books. And that's the first time I've given this answer to that question because it's been changing over the years. I didn't want to admit it because um, I used to like, you know, just finishing one book. But now I read in multiple genres. So I find that it's easier for me to like read halfway through a fantasy and then switch to a middle grade contemporary and then go back and forth versus like reading multiple like YA mysteries, you know? So as long as they're in different genres, I can do it. Yeah. <laughs> um so where uh do you get a lot of your ideas from authors as well um and for new books I, it's probably a combination of everything usually I don't know I'll wake up at three in the morning after dreams a lot and write down what I've been dreaming and I find that about like a good half of my ideas usually do come from dreams which I guess are inspired from probably like you know real life authors books I'm reading too <laughs> it's just my like you know unconscious brain processing those and, like twisting them into new formats so that's one big source and then yeah just living life you know listening to songs sometimes I'll hear like a random phrase and I'll be like well that's really interesting like what if I translate that into like a character or something so I think it is really like cool to be able to grab from just like everything. Um, there's this phrase I think we learned in like high school called intertextuality, where it's like the idea that everything is connected to everything. Like there is no book that is uninfluenced by any other book. And I think that's kind of a beautiful idea. This idea that like we can all just kind of grab elements from books that have existed for thousands of years and like character ideas and match them up in new ways. And so you're, it's like the Lego blocks from earlier where you're just like constantly remashing things. Right, right. Yeah, I think that's really interesting when people do that, um, take little bits and pieces from other stories, and you can see it in there. But then also yeah. you said, like, retelling an old story. So why did you pick um, Great Expectations? Well, so actually, when I first read Great Expectations in high school, I didn't really love it the first time around, I guess because I was being forced to read it. But then after college, I came back to it. And I was actually really struck by a couple of, like, interesting themes and character relationships. 
One of them was the fact that Estella, who's like the main romance in this book, instead of being, you know, like love at first sight and still love kind of things, it was like she was very cold and rude and mean to poor Pip, the main character of Great Expectations. And I thought that was just so intriguing to me. So I wanted to kind of mimic their relationship in my own book. And so that's kind of the first thing that just drew me instantly to wanting to retell the story. So the main character's name, because I've never read uh, Great Expectations. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so did you say the character's name was Pip? Yes, yeah, so you can kind of see the instant parallel. Pip and yeah, Pip. yeah. Yeah, I actually, um, her name had a, a lot of different variations at first. I think I was playing around with like Penelope, Piper, Pippa, and then one other P name, and eventually I narrowed it down to Pippa. So it could have been Penelope Park. Yeah. <laughs> Pippa Park has a really nice ring to it. <laughs> yeah, I like it too. I think that my boyfriend ended up picking Penelope, and then I was like, I'm sorry that I asked you because I'm still going with Pippa. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> it's, yeah, that happens sometimes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sometimes you gotta ask the question to know the answer inside yourself. Right, right. Because you hear somebody else say it. Yeah. And then you think, oh, wait, no, that just doesn't sound right. <laughs> exactly. You're like, what am I doing here? Yeah. <laughs> so I have one more question for you. Yeah. What is your favorite color? My favorite color? Ooh, I feel like this is the hardest question of them all. <laughs> I want to say red today, just because I'm feeling passionate and fired up. Maybe it's because I'm here with you on being interviewed. Um, but I also loved purple as a kid, um, and so I'm going to go with that as a back answer. <laughs> Red yeah. and purple. Red and purple. Good colors. <laughs> so um, that's all the questions that I have for you today, um, but I want to thank you so much for being yeah, no, here. thank you so much. Like, it was so exciting to be here today, so thank you for organizing everything. It was, and I really enjoyed talking to you and you answering all the questions for me. You and too. I learned so much from from listening to you as well as to Aww, how authors, you. <laughs> authors do, do their thing because it just seems like magic to me. <laughs> so I want to say that the link to Erin's writing workshop is going to be in the video description for the viewers who haven't seen it yet or anybody who wants to watch it again. Um, and those who are interested can also download the series complimentary printable online activities at pippapark.com including a worksheet on how to write your own retelling, discussion questions, and much, much more. So is there anything else that you'd like to add, Erin? No, just thank you so much for having me. I hope everyone watching, um, you know, had a good time too. So I'm really grateful. I hope so too. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Have a great time, everybody.